Violence against women is a global public health problem of epidemic proportion. When we first published the data last year, I was astonished. One woman out of three experienced violence, and that was across the different parts of the world, in countries with low income and high income. And this has very enormous public health consequences on the health of women and girls. So the double tragedy for women and girls is that violence increases the risk of unwanted pregnancy and STIs. But also when they have unwanted pregnancy and STIs, they are at even greater risk of violence against women and girls. WHO has clearly shown that health services are really key entry points in detection and response to violence against women and girls. I've been working many, many years as a healthcare provider and I know that women don't come forward with their stories. So we from the healthcare sector, we have to provide uh, openness and to give women space to talk about their problems. First, we are raising awareness about the proportion of the problems, publishing the data and the analysis. Secondly, we are working with countries to provide the evidence for how healthcare workers can address these problems, how they can be prepared. And also we are working with all the Ministry of Health of the world to develop what we call a global plan of action for the health system to address violence against women and girls. WHO's research has evolved over the years. We started out by describing the problem and we've now moved to research on what works, what are the kinds of interventions that are successful, both for preventing the problem from happening in the first place and also from interventions to respond. We also are developing standards for health and we have done that through the development of guidelines, our clinical handbook, and now we're developing curricula for training healthcare providers on how to respond to the issue. We're working with countries that have decided that now is the moment when they want to move forward with a health sector response to violence. Countries like Afghanistan, Uganda, India, and Cambodia. The key things we're helping them with are advocacy and political will, training of health workers, documenting lessons learned, and developing or updating their national protocols and guidelines. زمانی که مریضا مراجع می کردن به نسبت نداشتن فام تفهیم درستی که ما داشتیم یا ای که به اسلام مهارت لازمی را که ما باید می داشتیم ما نتونستیم که مریضا را به صورت خوبترش تداوی بکنیم یا در مراجع که لازم است رجعت بدیم این پروتکلی که در اختیار ما قرار گرفت یک پروتکل بسیار جامعه است که برای مرضا کندگان خدماتی این کمک می کنه که چطور بتونه با مریضای به اصطلاح خوشونت درش علایشان صورت می گیره چطور ما را تداوی بکنیم the WHO clinical handbook is really feeding so much knowledge into uh, what we've been lacking in the violence against women and management in the sexual gender based violence national management manuals of Uganda. I'm looking at the lives abbreviation, the quality of listening that somebody should be having. You keep in inquiring more, such that the survivor really digs much into her problem. And also the validation, at least to let her know that she's not anywhere to blame. And also to try to see how best you can uh, support, trying to give her referral systems where you network with other uh, sectors that would give her support, that can give her the best of life after the incidents. We have moved on now to do research on interventions to address violence against women. For example, in South Africa, we've been working to look at how to help women during antenatal care visits to address uh, violence they're experiencing during pregnancy. And we've seen a very positive response from the nurses and a lot of openness to adapting and adopting these interventions. We're beginning to see some impact. Policymakers are making commitments to investing in a health sector response to violence against women.
health workers are improving their knowledge, their skills and their attitudes towards addressing this public health issue. We have come a long way for sure. We still have some ways to go and the areas that I would flag are prevention. We need to do more to stop this violence from happening in the first place. This involves addressing the social norms that still prevail in many settings that make this form of violence acceptable. My hopes for the future are that women come to health facilities and get the care that they need, the care that they are entitled to, care that is compassionate, that respects their autonomy, their dignity and their rights. And the work that we're doing is contributing towards that. <laughs>